Mario Kart drifting and turbo boosting is very satisfying. It's one of those extremely honed in gameplay features that keeps the game fresh and enjoyable. It's easy to do, but hard to master. I'm also hyped to see the Mario movie this weekend, so I was inspired, along with some comment requests, to recreate something like the Mario Kart drifting in Game Builder Garage. Now mind you, this is the kind of very fine-tuned physics-based thing that's very hard to get right, and I'm not 100% happy with it to be honest. But I think by working on it, and playing around with this, you might be able to come up with something that feels good for your project. I also want to acknowledge this absolutely fantastic drifting demo that I played forever ago, and could just not quite figure out how they did it. It's actually way better than what I ended up with. For those who just want to jump in yourself and check it out, I have the game ID on screen now and in the description. So let's get started. So this is what we've got so far. We started out with the controllable car object. All I did was reduce the jump strength a tiny bit so that we can recreate the hop of the drift. Then we attached the camera with a 1.8 Y offset and a 5 Z offset, and we made sure to track the character's Y rotation. Then we have an A button press node on to accelerate. The left right stick node on is going through a map into the turning directions. All I did was change the negative one to positive one to a negative 0.75 to a positive 0.75. It just reduces the signal so turns aren't quite as harsh and added a few cylinders for the track. Now, if you've used the car object before, you know that it's not the best driving experience turns are really harsh and they're not smooth and it's just not that fun to drive. So the point today is going to be to try and add the drifts and the turbo boosts to make it a little bit more enjoyable. The main way we're going to do that is by using a moving object. So we're going to create one and add it to the world. Right now it's just a simple square. We'll attach it to the car and we'll turn off all the settings so that it's just holding a position that's attached to the car. Then we'll set it to center center. Next we're going to add a button press to initiate the drift. In this case I'm using the R button. Make sure that it's set to while pressed so that we can hold down the button to continue the drift. Then we'll add a flag note on. This first flag is going to maintain whether we are drifting or are not drifting. We also want to cause the car to do a small jump before we start drifting. So we're going to add a change from zero note on attached to our button so that when we press it, we activate a quick jump. Then we'll add a non node on. We're going to use this to determine every frame that the R or drift button is not being pressed. Any frame that is not pressed, we want to not be drifting. We'll take the flag output and put it into the X axis on the moving object. We'll change the frame of reference for motion to camera. And we'll leave our speed and acceleration mode as speed for now, but we'll get to that later. So now you can see when we press R, we do a little jump and there's a very slight force to the right or to the X positive. What we want to do is make it so that after our little jump, the drift starts to apply more physical force to the car in the direction that we started. So we're going to add another timer and set it to a very small amount of time, in this case 0.5 seconds. Then we'll add another flag. This flag will keep track of whether we are in our deep drift after we did the small hop. We'll take the not node on and attach it to the flag off again so that when we are not pressing the drift button, all forms of drifting will cease. Then we want to manipulate the flag output because one is just not strong enough. We'll get a multiplication node on and a constant set to 20 for now. So you'll see the stronger force only gets applied after about half a second, which gives us time to start our drifting jump. Already, the drift is looking a little bit more interesting than the regular turning, but it's not quite right yet. First, we're going to add a small boost to speed when we leave the drifting mode. We use an AND node on, and we'll attach the flag, which means that we're in deep drift, and the NOT node on, which means that the button has been released, and we'll put them together into the AND node on. There should be one frame in which both of those would be true before the flag gets turned off. And that's what we want. We'll attach that to another flag. This time, this is the whether we're boosting or not flag. We'll turn the flag on, and in the same exact frame, we'll start a one second timer. As soon as the timer is done, it will turn the flag off. Essentially, this is gonna make it so that the boosting flag is on for whatever amount of time we set this timer to. Then we'll add that to a multiplication node on, again with our 20 constant. So at the end of a long or deep drift, we should boost. Now, using the speed mode on a moving object is not that satisfying. It applies a very small consistent force. What we want to do is add another moving object, and this time set it to acceleration. This is going to keep 
adding force to the speed. This time we'll connect the boosting flag output that got multiplied by 20 into an acceleration movement node on and we can immediately see that the boost is a lot more satisfying and propulsive. We're going to do the same thing with our deep drifting output and attach that to the accelerating moving object. So the drift is feeling a lot better now. That initial nudge when we do the drift jump, we're still going to leave a speed because we don't want it to start jettisoning the car out into the sky the second that we initiate our hop. We're just going to grab everything here essentially and copy it over to work on the left side. We'll get rid of the boost flag since we're going to be using the original boost flag. And part of this build process was that I wanted to apply all of my outputs into only two moving objects. One for speed, one for acceleration. We'll learn later that that doesn't quite work because opposing forces and math will start to battle each other out if you move your stick to the left or right in the middle of a drift, which will cause problems. We also want to change any constants that apply a force to the X, positive or negative, by a negative number now so that they push to the X negative, which would be to the left. For our small force from the first drifting flag, we're just going to use an invert node on that's going to send the one signal into a negative one signal. And we'll make sure that the not drift button pressed node is still being connected to every drifting flag. We want all drifting to cease when we're not pressing that button. Now we need a way to determine whether the stick is facing left or right when we press the drift button, so we decide which direction to push in. We're going to disconnect the button press nodon from the original flags and add two AND nodons. The way we're going to do this is with two comparison nodons attached to the AND. The other AND input will be the button we'll get a constant nodon set to zero as the bottom comparison for both of these comparison nodons, and the top comparison will be the output from the stick. It will either be a negative number for left or a positive number for right. Then you just have to wire these up correctly. Your comparison nodon will go into one and input and your button press will go into the other. I spent some time here not understanding why it's not working, but in reality, I just didn't connect the and nodon to the flag in the right way. This is bound to happen because I have a bunch of ugly, disorganized spaghetti code. So try and do better when you build and organize things with comments as much as you can, because this is starting to get pretty ugly if I do say so myself. A few more bug fixes and things are starting to look a little wacky. What's happening is that multiple inputs are going into those two same moving object nodons, and this is when it's time to split them off so that each direction has its own set of moving objects. This way, there won't be opposing forces on the same moving object, causing weird physics glitches. I spend a couple minutes here adding some sounds so that I know when different phases are added in. It's all part of debugging, which you could do along the way to make sure that things are working properly. Next, we're going to create a boost pad. You can use any fancy object and even make it invisible just so that you can place them in the map. But I went with the arrow and I left it visible since it makes sense that going over an arrow on the floor would cause you to go faster. So you just place the fancy object in the world where you want a boost to occur. Then you take a touch sensor and attach it to your car. Make it slightly bigger than the car so it can sense for things outside of the vehicle and make sure that it's checking for the right fancy object. One output should go to a sound so you know that it's working, and the other output will go into the boost inputs. In this case, it's the boosting flag and the timer that tells the boost when to stop. You can create another set of these if you want the boost pad on the floor to cause the additional speed to go on for longer, or you can leave it the same. I feel like there are really not too many cart games made in Game Build Garage because of how unsatisfying the cart or car controller is, and also because there's no actual multiplayer and car AI would be impossibly hard to program into this game. Have you ever done something with a cart or the car controller? Let me know and share the game ID in the comments. 